So welcome to the Renfrew Expert Webinar Series. My name is Manfred Tauber and I'm Head of Global Education at Renfrew. This afternoon or in some countries uh, early evening, also in Greece, I would like to welcome Thanasis Kalogeropoulos from Athens, Greece. He runs his own dental laboratory, AK Dental Lab in Athens since 2006. His education and career started also in Athens, 1999. Thanasis Kalogaropoulos is a dental technician, an international course lecturer, and he joined the international group United Graben of Function 2019, where he trains now the concept of NET, the natural waxing technique, with the help of the occlusal compass. With this webinar, Thanasis present morphology and function, wakes up in a daily lab work. Now I look forward to an exciting presentation and hand over to you, Thanasis. As Manfred told you, uh, I'm coming from Greece. Uh, my name is Thanasis Kalyropoulos and the funny thing is that when i was searching for a picture to show you greece the only pictures that i could find is from greek islands and uh, to be honest it's not only mykonos and sandorini the greece there are many other worth visited places but nevertheless it's a nice picture so i use it I was born in Athens and uh, Athens is the place that I am living and where my lab is located. So let's go back to the presentation. We are going to talk about morphology, function, and especially the WhatsApp technique uh, and how we can use it in our daily lab work. In 2020 and uh, COVID-19 period, we can say that digital is not the future. That already happens. So, the question that comes up is, is it works up in the digital era uh, in old fashioned techniques, should, should be in old fashioned? or it should be an indispensable tool. The answer that comes, the, the, the question that we usually are facing, even if years now the digital technology came to our field, is should we go on digital or we or should we stay in analog? And after that, production or quality. So for those For those who uh, believe that dental technology has much more to offer in terms of quality, the answer is easy. Especially when the possibility of an in-lab full digital production is not an option. But let's see it in a different way. What do you think about our work? Is it an art? or a technology. The main thing is what, uh, what we try to, to do with our job is to copy nature, or at least we should try to copy nature. But this is not always an easy case. It's not, and, and 
this is because it's not only a matter of color. What we expect in general for, from prosthetic restorations? From prosthetic restoration, we are expected color matching, right shape, perfect fitting, durability, and function. Or, in one word, we can say morphology. And this is what makes morphology the most important factor for successful restorations. At least, let's see what we should do in order to learn morphology. The first thing, and the hardest in my opinion, is to study the theory. Not only in the beginning, because uh, continuous, continuing education is the most important thing that we can do, that we can follow in, in order to be better and better. Studying nature is also a way of learning morphology. We can collect natural tooth and through observation, we can gain knowledge of morphology. Studying models out of plaster or even better out of resin is also a good way of learning morphology. The main thing is that the models should be uh, from natural dentations. Another easy way of learning morphology and increasing our skills in handwork is drawing. Or even more, an interesting and fun way of learning morphology, sculpting with clay. is a way that we can learn morphology easier because we are working in a bigger dimensions. So this makes the work a bit easier. Carving technique is one of the most known techniques that can help us to learn morphology. We can say that we have two different carving techniques, carving, wax carving technique and plaster carving technique. Usually a wax carving technique is used from the beginners and uh, it's a technique that we learn it in dental schools and it's the first way to learn morphology, to learn the dimensions of teeth and learn in a way to work in the proper dimensions and in the proper sizes. On the other hand, carving technique, uh, plaster carving technique is a more difficult technique. Uh, usually for skilled technicians that they are interesting in uh, learning more details about morphology and increase their skills in micromorphology. Finally, we can say that there is one more technique, the workshop technique, in my opinion, it's the best way of learning morphology, not because the, the wax is a low cost material, but it's an easy handling material. So you can easily make a, a learn morphology throughout WhatsApp. In the beginning of my dental uh, technician career, I 
had the opportunity to learn morphology from a great guy in Germany, from Mikhail Kessenich. He showed me how to work according to the PK Thomas wax technique. It's a drop wax or wax added technique, and sometimes we can, we can find it like fish mouth technique. And as you can see, it's a wax up technique that uh, is based on adding small amounts of wax and creating step by step the whole morphology. Starting from the tips of the casts, for, uh, going on with cast cones, uh, marginal ridges. Filling in the axial, the axial contours, and then step by step creating the occlusal surface, giving shape to the main and the secondary ridges, and filling all the contact points. Here, as you can see, the speed curve and the Wilson curve are helping us to determine the location and the height of the cast tips. Also, we can use some other materials and uh, some, some other instruments and according the golden proportion we can get useful information for teeth positioning, like the angle and the axis. For this kind of box ups, working with electric box knife for me is one way around. Uh, and this is because in this way I can easily control the tip temperature and I can get highly detailed results. But to be honest, I'm not using the standard tips, the number one and number three. My recommendation is to use number two and number nine. It's much easier modeling fine structures with these tips. After some years of working, uh, when good shape, texture, and realistic state were my expectation, I had the opportunity to visit August Bruguera's uh, training center in Barcelona. And at that time, I learned how to work aesthetically. The aesthetically works up, works in technique is also a wax added technique that helps us to increase our skills in layering. In layering. And in the same time, it gives us a realistic visualization of the final result, of the final restoration. So, after that course and that experience, Geo Expert work set from, Renf from Renfert became my daily work tool. And for cases like this, it helps me a lot to check if there is enough space for layering. 
sorry. Here you can see how the layering starts with the boxing cap and how the final result looks like. So before all my workshops, I am using the precise copying technique. I'm using Hoti in order to make a precise wax copings because in this way I can control the minimum thickness of my final restoration. And usually I am using whiteys or tooth shade spacers in order not to have different color on the dye and have strange results on my workshops. For cases like this, works up is needed in order to have an aesthetic result predictable and long and long lasting throughout the works up we know from the beginning the final result we can show it to the dentist and the patient and in this way we can have a better communication and we can have results, final results like this. But this makes works up necessary for both sides, either for dentists or for dental technicians. And in order to be able to use the works up in our whole a working procedure, we should take care of some details. Like good impressions are recommended. Dentation and gingiva areas should be fully reprinted on the models. So have a look here, we, ha we should have impressions like this. in order to be able to make a silicone keys, duplicate our box up with silicone keys and can transfer it either intraoral or making a mock-up or in the lab for transfer the box up in, on the master models. But to be honest, these are not routine cases. So at least not in my lab. Single chromes, inlays, onlays are part of our everyday work. And when I have time, when I have plenty of time, I love spending it doing it freehand. But usually our daily life is a race against time. So in this case, we need to find solutions to make with the same quality restorations even faster. And here you can see some examples of smaller cases that you can see how from the WhatsApp 
we can go easily to a press ceramic, monolithical press ceramic. And here, an intraoral picture. Or in cases like this, that I'm working with composites, I'm used in making at first a workshop, and then through the stamp technique, I can transfer from wax to, compo to composite, and the results are really great without a big effort because if you are work, working in a daily routine with wax it's easier to create something in wax and then you can copy it in different materials and for sure it's easier if you are not doing the whole procedure by yourself and someone else is doing maybe the boxing cup. In this case, you can easily uh, change some details or make some small corrections and then go on with the duplication and the final restoration. But even in these smaller routine cases, in terms of, of health and durability, function has the main impact. And as we all know, teeth do not make, do not merely make contact with each other. The contacts made between opposing teeth and known as antagonistic contacts are classified to A, B, and C contacts. Talking about function and contact points, I would like to mention that last year I had the opportunity to participate in a series of, of courses in Germany and Except from the knowledge that I get, I get from my teacher, Oliver Drehe, that function is not everything. But without function, everything else is nothing. So this makes me look deeper in this field and search for more details and upgrade my knowledge in morphology and function. And after one year of course participation and many hours of studying, I was honored to become a member of United Drag Dragon of function, function and an international training of NAT technique and occlusal compass. But let's see what is the dental occlusal compass and how it can help us in morphology. Dental occlusal compass describes the mandible, mandible movements during chewing. These are three main movements, protrusion, lateral protrusion, and mediotrusion. Two intermediate areas, lateral protrusion and medioprotrusion, and two short additional ones that it's protrusion and medial side shift. Dental occlusal compass shows us the functional pathways of antagonistical cusp tips. And 
in a combination with the color code are the central elements for a segmented WOPS technique. This WOPS technique, the functional WOPS technique is known as NAT. And as you can see, it's also one works added technique starting from the tips, cast tips, going on with the cones. And the main thing, the main point here is to find from the beginning the contact points. And talking about contact points, here usually there is a misunderstanding. There are not three the contact points on the first molar of upper jaw there is a three point contacts. So this three point contacts is, gi is giving to the mouth a stable position and protect it from rotation. And we can find this three point contact out of five different contact points and for just information for the in the first molar of the upper jaw we can find nine of nine occlusal contact points going on by shaping the cones and as you can see the occlusal compass helps in dimensioning the cones. And here you can see the final result out of NA technique. The last two years, Renfred came with this color code work set the functional work set. And from that, that time on, uh, it became my tool, special, especially when I'm giving courses. Because as you can see, it's a great educational tool. And in conclusion, before, in, in conclusion, I would like to tell you that in my opinion, there is no a wrong or a right technique. The technique that works is the right one. So it's better to know all the techniques, all boxing techniques. And after that, easily we can choose which one fits more in our hands. Or even better, we can combine them and we can create our own box technique. And an advice, from my side is don't try to copy nature, but try to find the principles she's using. Before going back to Manfred, I would like to tell you that if you have the possibility to visit Greece, visit Athens, you can also visit us. 
you maybe if you want you can participate in some of the courses that we are giving in our small training center and of course you can follow me on facebook or instagram you can join the dental tech executive education group or you can contact directly to my mail. Thank you very much for watching this small presentation. Thank you once again, Renfert, that invited me in this series of webinars and I recommend you that if you didn't see the presentations of my colleagues, you, you can see them on Renfeld's uh, social media or YouTube page. So, Thank you very much, Knatsis, for your presentation. Okay. Back to you. Hello? Yes. Yeah, thank you very much for your presentation, Knatsis. And um, we saw again that uh, it's how important it is to, uh, to learn the skills at the beginning when we are technicians or also for, for dentists. And then it's the whole life is, is learning yeah? because we have new techniques, but the start is very important that we know what happens about morphology, about function, about aesthetic. Otherwise, uh, we do something and don't know what we are doing. And again, Manfred, I, yes, Manfred, to be honest, I feel lucky because from the beginning of my career, I was by the side of great technicians and I learned a lot of them from them, uh, but on the other hand, I believe that luck is not enough for being better and better. So <laughs> I think that I, I work also a little bit in this direction. Yeah. So I believe that we need to be advised and to learn from better technician than us and then for me it's important to study and practice in a daily routine yeah. this is true but this is our profession it's always a challenge <laughs> yeah. okay thank you again uh, okay also another information uh, you know this is like a webinar series and uh, also next week we'll, we will offer also another interesting webinar with Mohit Shuriravanchi from Kolhapur from India. I know him also since many years. He's also a great dental technician. And his topic will be the art and science involved in dental laboratory procedures. Yeah, also like something about workflow. I think it will be also very interesting. Next Tuesday, July 14th. Sign up for it. And also, Kanasitz told you that uh, follow our posts of the Renfield Expert webinar series uh, on our uh, website, Renfield, or in our social media channels like Facebook and also Instagram. Thank you very much for all participants. Hopefully we see you again and, and we look forward again for really nice uh, presentations. Thank you, Kanasitz. Thank you very much. And bye-bye. Just to say to you, Manfred, one thing, one more thing. Yeah. Uh, last week, I've been asked to make also this presentation in Greek language. So maybe in a few days or in a few weeks, we can organize it in, in Greek language. So yeah. we we'll discuss it afterwards and yeah. I can give you some more information about this. Yeah, this is also what I ask all the uh, lecturers, if it's possible also to have the 
the, 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 the mother language presentations is also important. It's your mother language. And if you have the possibility, you are welcome to present also in your native language. Okay. Thank you very much once again. Yeah. And hope to see you soon. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>